Diablo 4 has sold incredibly well, and I'm actually very happy with the game, but I do have some questions. Questions that I also share with the rest of the community. Everyone is starting to ask this, and it really kind of boils down to, what does the seasonal pass and the seasonal model for this game really look like? And hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name is Brian, if you happen to be new around here, I'm a software dev, stand-up comic, father of six, I think all of that in and of itself sounds pretty weird, but uh, hey, a couple of you guys figured you'd subscribe and, you know, and now you're still here. So thanks so much for coming back to today's video. Now, we're going to be talking about the problem with Diablo 4 from my perspective as a software engineer, uh, but this is also my perspective as a gamer because Diablo 4 is a legacy game, just like Halo and many games before it that are trying to find and make a new way in the modern gaming economy, the modern gaming expectations. And if you guys haven't been following, I think a good speech from Yoshi P, this, uh, the producer and developer of Final Fantasy 14 and the producer of Final Fantasy 16 talks about the expectations that games have just for the MMO genre in and of itself. But what is Diablo 4? Is it an MMO? Is it a shared world looter, you know, axe wielding, you know, not necessarily shooter, but <laughs> you know, you get hopefully where I was going with uh, in that, that perspective, because that's where we sit right now as we look forward to the future of what Diablo 4 is and what it means to be. And that always kind of seems to boil down into expectations, both unspoken and the ones that we have that aren't necessarily rooted in reality. To kind of catch everybody up, uh, Diablo 4 is in a weird spot. It's trying to hold on to this concept of seasons with a fresh character, which is not to be unexpected. It's not to be like bemoaned. It is what it is in this regards, but not everybody who's been trained in seasonal models might not necessarily be used to that. So it kind of is trying to walk this weird tightrope. And that's why I think it's really interesting and a hopefully good discussion video for y'all today. I want to kick this off with what Paul Tassie says. Paul Tassie is tweeting out, I did not do previous Gen Diablo seasons, so I don't really fully get it. If I want to do a level specific characters from scratch, can I still use my permanent ones to progress the battle passes? And Rod Ferguson chimes in and he says, Hey Paul, yes, you can take part in the seasonal quest line mechanics, seasonal journey and the battle pass. You will need to create a new seasonal character to do so. Playing the campaign with the seasonal character, if you so desire or need to finish, will also progress the seasonal journey and the battle passes. And so Neko in this same kind of thread writes, I'm new to, Di uh, to Diablo player. And as a new dad, I only have maybe an hour a day to game, if that. So my current character is only level 11. You're saying I should basically not even play the game then, right? And Rod says, no, you should definitely play. The new seasonal mechanics feature comes after the campaign is complete. So you'll should focus on completing it now so you can just skip it when the season starts since you only ever need to complete the campaign once. So those are the tweets, right? And here is where I'm at. I have no idea really what that truly means. We really haven't seen it play out. And every article that I've read, every bit of information that I've tried to consume ends up boiling down to this one perspective. What? Like, how does that going to feel? What's that going to look like? Am I going to be satisfied with it? And it's weird because this is a part of the value package. This is a part of the upgrade that they sell to us already. In fact, that's the what I already purchased. I already have the most upgraded package humanly possible. What does this feel like? How's it going to land? And what are the expectations? Is this truly what it is? And this is where I come back to like, I guess my original thought in all of this, this conversation. First and foremost, I don't view the seasonal model within the launch of Diablo 4 as a true seasonal model. I view that more of an expansion model as actually representing that of what we what I would kind of defer as a season for players who maybe aren't going to just live and breathe and only play Diablo 4, but maybe play Diablo 4, finish the campaign, maybe check out whatever the seasonal stuff is for a little bit, and then dip into other games that happen to fall this fall, like Starfield, for example. Really excited about that game. Anyhow. All that to be said is that whether they do an expansion yearly or an expansion every two years, that will end up being that re-invitation point for everybody. I've seen a lot of uh, other content creators talk about the the, the drop off, right? That's you know, and, and saying like, they, hey, if they don't fix this, this, this is going to be a drop off. There's always going to be a drop off. Anybody who says that a game is going to maintain its numbers and continue to maintain those numbers post launch 
is either a Fortnite player and that's the only game they've played. That's their first introduction into gaming. Even still now, the numbers have obviously dipped for Fortnite or a WoW player. And that's essentially one of these once in a decade lifetime kind of events that don't really happen within gaming. Gaming has this attrition rate that no matter what, it will continue to dip. But when expansions and content, a certain percentage of the population will come back, new players and old players and returning players. So one of the things I'd just like to kind of communicate and hopefully I continue to beat this drum is that we really don't know the true numbers. And a lot of people infer a lot of different things from this. And this really kind of does personally frustrate me because the real metric is new players and returning players. What is that percentage and how long of a gap has it been since so-and-so has logged in, has, you know, done some content and what was their session like? How much time do they spend? These are the analytics that I think truly matter. And these are analytics that we never really get in regards to these kind of games. So it's kind of, it ends up becoming the risk that content creators like myself and others can set a false narrative, can set false information that seeds itself and becomes what people talk about. And that's not fair personally uh, to the developers and to the game uh, overall, but you know what it is? I, <laughs> I can't fix all of that. But regarding the seasonal pass model in and of itself, I don't think it's going to be like massive numbers. I think it's going to feed the players who want to participate in that kind of content. And it's going to help fund the game somewhat so that when they decide to release an expansion, you can kind of have these things, these seasons, these bigger kind of seasons, as opposed to the mini seasons uh, to kind of take part in it. Could it be better? Yeah, I think I kind of relate to like starting a brand new character over and over again. I knew that Diablo did that. So I was expecting that to kind of have a part in here but I would really want to see something where I wouldn't have to participate in that fresh character to be able to participate in the season. And this is the problem with Diablo 4. How do you walk this line? How do you appease multiple different kinds of expectations? And ultimately, if you do and you try to do too much, if you try to please everybody, you're not going to end up pleasing anybody. So in a way, I think them doing this makes a lot of sense. However, what we're going to be watching for here with the question we're going to be asking is how do the devs respond to the player feedback? How do they respond to these expectations? How do they communicate this in an effective way? Because after diving into everything, after reading these tweets, reading these articles, watching several videos, listening and consuming, I'm still confused how this is even going to all work and how it's going to feel. And that's the problem with Diablo 4, in my perspective. Anyhow, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you feel like it, slap like on your way out. You can always double tap that dislike button. I uh, hear it doesn't work that well, so you can uh, make up your own mind in that regards. So sound, uh, sound off in the comments if anything I said was interesting or you have any questions about anything that I can help clarify in this video. And without further ado, with all that being said, I wish you guys all the best. Thanks for being here. Love you, love your faces. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video, but until then, Take care.